Welcome to Veramtech. In this video I'm going to show you how I set up my Vivo device from scratch. Here are all the things I'm going to talk about. You'll see the list on the left of the screen all the time. So it is not the typical short video that you know me for, but I promise I will keep it as short as possible. And of course throughout the video some of the settings that I choose are to my preference, so you can choose whatever you prefer. And one more thing, if I go too fast you can just stop the video. Here we go. First we have to boot up the phone, then here it is important to press on these Chinese letters to change the language. Choose the language that you prefer, in my case it is English. Then press get started with origin OS. And of course we have to agree to the terms of service. In the next step you have to put a SIM inside or connect to a Wi-Fi network to make things easier. And once you've got that done, press on next. Then we have screen unlock method, choose the one that you prefer. Next is to sign in to your Vivo account, you can sign in if you have an account or you can create one. So I will sign in, but you can also skip if you prefer to do that. To skip, press on no Vivo account or skip, then press on skip and press not now. You can always log in or create the account later, so no worries. Next one is service recommendations. Here I just press next because even if I disable them now, they will still pop up later. So in this case we can disable them later in the settings. Moving on, so now we have import data. Here you can import data from another device, do that if you'd like to. I'm just gonna set up the device without importing anything. So here I will press on skip. Now choose the system navigation style that you prefer and press on go to origin OS. So finally we have made it to the home screen, congratulations. Now we have to set up Google Play services and download the Google Play Store app. There are three ways to do this. So the first one you have to go to the phone settings, press on more connections and then press on Android Auto. Here it will ask us to enable Google Basic Service Management. Of course we press on turn on and to download the Play Store app press download now. It will take you directly to the download page and here we can press on install. So for the second method of installing the Google Play Store we have to go to the vApp Store. In the vApp Store press on the search bar. When the Vivo IME Pro pop up we can press agree or disagree. Anyway we are going to change the keyboard later so it doesn't matter. Now on the keyboard press on the button that is on the right of the spacebar to get a full keyboard. After that type Google Play Store and then download the Play Store app. So for the third way we can extract the Google Play app from an older device and transfer it over the computer as an APK file. If you want to know how to do that let me know in the comments. Moving on. So before downloading all the apps that I want, I have to uninstall all the apps that came pre-installed. First I will dissolve all the folders to make it easier to uninstall all the apps together. We can do that by simply pressing and holding on the folder then press dissolve. Then to uninstall all the apps together, press and hold on the free space of the home screen to be able to mark many apps. Mark the ones that you don't need and then press uninstall. Ok, now we can download all our desired apps so that we can set up everything and solve the notification issue. And of course we have to sign in to the Google Play Store using our Google account. To show you how to fix the notification issue I will download WhatsApp, Telegram and Snapchat. Once we have finished downloading all the apps we can go to the phone settings. Here we have to press on mobile network and then more mobile network settings. Press on bandwidth allocation and then choose prioritize allocation for the foreground. Next is to go back to the settings, scroll down and press on privacy. Go to permission management and on the top right press on permissions. Then enter the one that says auto start. And here we can choose and activate all the apps that we want to receive notifications for. Alright, the notification part is done. Moving on to the UI settings. So I prefer to disable the smart launcher that pops out from the left. To do that go to settings. Go to home screen, lock screen and wallpaper. Then home settings, press on more home settings and disable the smart launcher. There is also the lock screen poster that changes wallpaper on the lock screen. I find it annoying that it changes my wallpaper sometimes with some accidental screen touches. To disable it go to the same settings again to the home screen, lock screen and wallpaper. Then press on lock screen then lock screen poster and turn it off. Another thing is that I like to be able to swipe down on my home screen to see my notifications. But here we have global search when swiping down. So to change it we have to go to the same settings page again. 
then press on home settings, press on swipe down on the home screen and here I will choose notification center and control center. Like this swiping down on the right shows control center and swiping down on the left shows the notification center. See what I mean? I don't have to stretch my thumb to see my notifications. I don't know about you if you'd like to change your icon settings but I prefer to do that. It's in the same settings page as before. You can see icons, press on icons. Here I like to change my icons to large and then to make them even larger, I also remove icon name. You do as you like of course. I also like to set my screen to the maximum screen refresh rate and maximum resolution. To do that we can go to settings, then go to display and brightness, press on screen refresh rate and then select high. Then for the resolution we have to go back to the display and brightness settings, then go to screen resolution and select UHD. Moving on, now I can tell you that I'm not a fan of the origin browser. I like to have Chrome on my device. And you know when you open links through other apps, they always open in the default default browser. In this case it is the stock origin browser. To change that so that everything opens in Chrome instead, we have to go to settings, go to apps and then default apps. Then here press on browser and choose the one that you have downloaded. One last thing, I've seen people that have issue with opening PDF files directly from the Gmail app. To solve this issue we have to download the Google Drive app and then reset all the Gmail app data. Now on to the second part of the video the camera. Here I'm going to tweak some of the things to my own liking. Again to remind you you don't have to do exactly what I do so you can choose the things that you prefer. Ok, in the camera press on the settings wheel up in the right corner. Here I will activate effect adjustments so that it can give us the full control over brightness, saturation, contrast and sharpness. Then go to more settings. Here I will turn off mirrored selfie because that's not how people see me in real life. And then quick action for camera. I will choose launch camera camera only. So the next one is keep settings. Here I like to keep everything on except for the camera mode. Moving on to portrait features. Here I prefer everything turned off to keep things looking as natural as possible. Then in the pro mode I like to disable video stabilization because I have a gimbal that I use when recording. Next one is shutter. If you have seen my previous videos I use the voice shutter saying cheese to take a photo. So of course I will activate that one. Then we have enhanced night sky and landscape moon effect. I turn them both off. Off, I really do not want any fake sky or fake moon in my photos. And the same goes for the super telephoto enhancement. Moving on to video. First default resolution and frame rate. Here I like to have it set to 4K60 and 4K30 on the ones that do not support 60 frames per second. Then we have codec. Here I prefer high compatibility to have less issues when playing the video on other devices. And bitrate I will set it to high but this one is only supported in the professional mode. So now that we finished here we can go back to the camera and go to portraits. Here press on the face icon on the right of the screen and then deactivate the beauty effects. So that's basically all my preferred settings for the camera. Of course I didn't cover everything in this video, if there's anything else you want to know about comment below. Did you find this video to be helpful? In this case like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you for inspiring my videos with your ideas and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.